Roger Bisbee here from the Ask Skill Builder desk, and we've got a little question from Nick here. Nick is just doing this house up, and it's a bit of an old house. You can see there's a lot of sand and lime construction there, and he wants to insulate these walls. He is about to, he's hacked off all the old plaster, which would have been a sand and lime plaster. These aren't very good pictures, but they bear with us. And also, he wants to insulate the floor. He's put in new floors there. And before he puts down this chipboard, he wants to insulate them. So he's asking, what's the best thing to do? Well, let's look at the floor first of all. Probably the best thing you can do is put down something like a PUR board in there, Celotex, Kingspan, any of those ones. Cut it nicely, neatly between those floor joists and make sure there are no gaps there any air gaps and things like that you need to fill in all around the bay window there if you can make a nice job of cutting that in and then if there are any gaps put some expanding foam down there just to make sure that you've got a nice airtight structure then you can put some polythene vapor barrier over the top of the whole floor before you put the chipboard down now the only advantage of doing this is that if there's moisture in the room and it wants to migrate through the floor it will be slowed down or, or prevented from going through there by the vapor barrier so that means there'd be less moisture under the floor for the air bricks to get rid of but it's not strictly necessary and i'm not sure that anything is going to happen to these boards anytime soon but what you mustn't do is put any kind of vapor barrier on the underside of the insulation because what would happen then is you would get any moisture that migrated through would go through the insulation if it could around the gaps and it would condense on that vapor barrier because it would be on the cold side of the vapor barrier so not only is it useless doing that it can actually do a lot of harm so if you're having vapor barrier always on top always on the warm side of the insulation and then put these boards down glue them put a nice bead of adhesive all the way along these joists when you put the boards down and then glue the joints as well the tongue and groove joints as well then expanding glue you can bite in a bottle it's made for this job and if you do that it won't squeak you won't have any problem with it squeaking because a lot of people don't bother doing that they don't even bother gluing the joints and when they put the whole thing together it looks all right but as you get a tiny bit of shrinkage and movement around these joists you start getting the odd squeak on the boards and of course by the time you've done all that work it's difficult to rectify so it looks like he's got a few things here already in these cans to do the job with on the walls he, he was talking about having them plastered with sand and lime plaster and he said it was three thousand quid to do this wall here and that wall and he thought mm, it's quite a lot of money now i think what he was thinking is if he had them plastered with sand and lime that it would insulate the walls better than having them done with a gypsum product which it's true but it's not it's not a huge benefit in the insulation it's it's slight what i would do is i get some plasterboard try and get ones longer ones that will go floor to ceiling so you haven't got to mess around with any joints and then what you could do is you could either get the tapered edge board or you can get the square edge board and have the whole lot skimmed but if you get a thermal board you get some insulation on the back of that board you can get various thicknesses Obviously, the thicker you go, the more expensive it goes. But if you get some thermal board and dot and dab that all over those walls and put a nice continuous bead of adhesive all the way around the edge of every board so that there's no air drifting around behind that wall, that'll stop that, limit the air movement greatly just to that one board. And when you go around the sockets, do the same thing. Make sure you've got a continuous bed of adhesive all the way around the sockets and then the rest of it can just be dabbed as it were fix those boards that are dot and dab and that way you'll get the insulation you'll do away with any cold bridging it'll be a nice tidy job you know it, okay there are people that would say oh don't dot and dab always set and, and float and set but quite honestly in this day and age thermal board is a very good thing if you use plaster even if you use a lime plaster you will get some kind of cracking because these are old walls there's going to be a little bit of movement in there and eventually you're going to get some kind of cracking and i hope that helps nick anybody who wants any similar advice if you're doing a place up and uh, you're a bit stuck then send your questions into the skill builder help desk we will do our best to answer them 
<laughs> he says he'll do his best and I believe he will because we have had over 2,000 Ask Skill Builder messages from all of you and Roger loves to help. He's quite often sitting there late into the night answering the questions and some of you might be thinking, what can I do for Roger? Well, I tell you what you can do. Share a video, share the channel. We want to get up to 1 million subscribers because we like round numbers. So if you can help us do that, everyone will be happy.